going to go over angles of polygons. So all the different angles that have to do with the polygon. So in order to do that, we have to discuss what a diagonal is. So a diagonal is a segment that connects two non-consecutive vertices. So what that, does, what that is, is these red lines right here and right here um, are diagonals for this pentagon. Um, and it's how we figure out all the angles inside of any polygon, no matter how many sides it is. You draw all the diagonals possible. So P can't go to T because that's a side. It can go to S, it can go to R, and it can't go to Q because that's a side. So it creates three triangles within this pentagon. And as you know, each triangle has a sum of 180 degrees which means that all the interior angles of a pentagon would be three times 180. So that's how we figure that out. <clears throat> so, oh, and also, um, this is a pentagon. It has five sides, but it has three triangles inside of it. And that's going to be important when we come up with our formula later. All right, so all the names of all the polygons. A three-sided is a triangle. A four-sided is a quadrilateral. Five-sided is a pentagon. Six-sided is a hexagon. Seven-sided is a heptagon. Eight-sided is an octagon. Nine-sided is a nonagon. Ten-sided is a decagon. And then we never learn eleven-sided, which is weird. It does have a name, um, but I've been teaching this so long, I don't even remember what the name is because we never, ever use it. Twelve-sided is a dodecagon. Then... Any other sided object over 12 is in. So all other sides, and we call the sides in. So however many sides there are, we call that in. Um, so any other sides is an in, in a gone. So in other words, 30 sides is a 30 a gone. Uh, 20 sides is a 20 a gone, 25 sides is a 25 a gone, um, a million sides would be a million a gone. Um, so it's just, you add gone to the end of the number. All right, sum of interior angles. So this is where this part comes in. It's five sides, but has three triangles in it that are 180 degrees. So for the sum of interior angles, N is the number of sides, which we discussed up above. So our formula is n minus 2 times 180. Because remember up here we had five sides, but it only had three triangles in it. So you always subtract 2 from the amount of sides, just like we would subtract 2 there to get from 5 to 3. So you subtract 2 from the amount of sides to tell you how many triangles are in it, and then you multiply that times 180 because all the angles of a triangle are 180. And what that does is it gives you the sum of the interior angles. So in other words, on this pentagon down here, if you take all of these and add them together, then they would equal 180 times 3, which would be 540 degrees. So N minus 2 is the number of triangles Uh, formed by the diagonals. All right, so find the sum of interior angles of this pentagon. It has five sides. One, two, three, four, five. So N is five. So we're going to plug it in to the formula. We're going to plug five in right there for the N. So it's going to be five minus two times 180. 5 minus 2 is 3 
times 180, which means all the interior angles add up together to be 450 degrees. Um, so whenever you have a pentagon and you are given all the angles like this, you will add them all together and set them equal to 540 because that's what all the interior angles of a pentagon add up to be. And just because y'all have some history with a triangle, let's say you have three sides of a triangle. Three minus two is one times 180. So for a triangle, the sum of interior angles is 180. So it works for all of them. All right, for number two, you add all these together. So 2x plus 142 plus 2x plus 3x plus 14 plus 3x plus 14. And then if you didn't know how many sides are in a triangle, I mean a pentagon, sorry, um, how many, what, dear Lord, I can't say it, what the interior angles of a triangle, the sum of them would be, then you would put the equation right here. Now for us, we already know it's 540. So we're gonna combine like terms. All my x's, whenever I add them together, is 10x. All my constants, when I add them together, is 170. And then of course this, we already found the answer to is 540. So just to highlight, since it's so much, all of these x's added together give you 10x. All of these constants, added together gives you 170 and then this whole thing gives you 540 all right so subtract 170 from both sides and that means that 10x is equal to 370 divide by 10 so x is equal to 37 Okay, so that's the sum of interior angles. If you added all the angles together, if you wanted to find one interior angle, and this is specifically of regular polygons. So just in case you aren't sure what a regular polygon is, that is any polygon with the same, all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. So a regular pentagon would have all five sides be the same length and all the angles on the inside be the same measure. <clears throat> a regular hexagon, same thing. All six sides would be the same length. All six angles would be the same measure. So the formula for this is you take the sum of interior angles, right, what we already did, and then you're going to divide it by the amount of sides. And that will give you what each angle is. All right, so let's practice that. Find the measure of each interior angle of a regular heptagon. Well, a heptagon n is equal to seven because a heptagon is a seven-sided object. So we have n minus two times 180 divided by n, which means we do seven minus two times 180 divided by seven. Seven minus two is five. Um, 5 times 180 is 900. So if you divide that, it's a hundred, about 128.6 degrees. Anytime you deal with heptagons, you're going to have decimals for their angle measures just because um, 7 is a funky number. It almost always has decimals. And then the next one says the measure of an interior angle of a regular polygon. Um, we don't know how many sides. Um, is 135 degrees. So find the number of sides in the polygon, which means you have this equation, and that is equal to 135. So take it one step at a time. We need no variables and denominators, so we need to get that in out. So to do that, because dividing is, multiplying is the opposite of dividing, these cancel, and on the left we have n minus 2 times 180, is equal to 135 n. Now we distribute the 180. So 180 n 
minus, and then 180 times 2 is 360. And then I'm going to subtract both sides by 135N to get all the N's on one side. And so on the left, that gives me 45N minus 360, and it's equal to zero. I have run out of room. So now I'm going to add 360 to both sides. So 45n is equal to 360. Divide by 45 on both sides. And this shape is an octagon. Oops, sorry. All right, so some of exterior angles. Anytime you have a polygon, if you just keep extending one of the sides over and over again, um, then that will show you all the exterior angles. So these are exterior angles of a quadrilateral. So it's four sides, right? One, two, three, four. And it has all the exterior angles. The sum of exterior angles for all polygons, every single one of them will always be 360 degrees every single time. So find the value of X in the diagram. That's all of the angles together. So we're going to add them all together and set them equal to 360. So 2X minus 5 plus 3X plus 10 plus 6X minus 5 plus 2X plus 5X is equal to 360. Combine all of those X's together and you get 18X. Um, and all the constants actually end up canceling because negative 5 and negative 5 give you negative 10. Then you add 10 and it's 0. So they cancel. So 18x is equal to 360. Divide both sides by 18. And x is equal to 20. Now if you need one exterior angle of a regular polygon... This only works for regular polygons. Remember, those are polygons with equal sides and equal angles. So all of these are regular polygons. Um, then you just take 360 and divide it by the number of sides. So to find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular dodecagon, remember that means that n is 12. Then we do 360 divided by 12 which is 30 degrees. So each exterior angle of a dodecagon would be 30 degrees. And that's the end of our notes.